Well, migration is a divisive issue in the country, and who has the right to live in Italy or claim citizenship is an issue that has been debated for decades. A parliamentary commission has been hearing evidence on this since 2019. Pro-migrant organizations and the Democratic Party want reform. But right-wing parties, including former Deputy Prime Minister Matteo Salvini's Lega or the League Party, are resisting change. Currently, there are thought to be about one million people in Italy who were born and always lived in the country but are not considered Italian, usually because their parents were or are not Italian. But separately, there are thousands of people who can claim an Italian bloodline who do not have a a legitimate path to citizenship. They are the grandchildren and sometimes great-grandchildren of Italians who lived in former colonies like Eritrea who continue to battle to claim their birthright. Well, Vittorio Longhi is an Italian journalist of Eritrean origin and author of the book The Color of My Name. He joins us now by Skype from Rome. Vittorio Longhi, thank you so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Now, in your book, you, you tell your story, which you are obviously um, uh, an Italian uh, of mixed uh, heritage, uh, Italian and Eritrean. Explain to us why it's so difficult for many Eritreans of mixed Italian origin uh, to claim that birthright. Well, from the very beginning, from the very early days of Italian colonialism in, in the Horn of Africa and in Eritrea in particular, uh, Italian men, when they felt somehow legitimated, allowed or even encouraged by the government of the time to go there and enjoy the place and even have children and just leave them with their mothers after their missions of two or three years. Um, let's not forget that the two fundamental pillars of colonialism were racism and male chauvinism. So it was not so much interesting for the Italian government, you know, to raise those children and to grant them citizenship. But um, things got really worse with Italian uh, fascist government. Uh, Mussolini himself, he, has these, he had this very personal war against mixed race people. So uh, he issued two laws in 1937 and 1940 uh, to actually prevent Italian men and Italian fathers from acknowledging their children, mixed race children they used to have with um, very young Eritrean women, uh, often working for them as domestic helpers and maids. And so in having mixed race children became a crime, and but, but this not prevented men from keeping having children with, with, with Eritrean women. So basically, uh, those women, those mothers, and those children, their grandchildren, could not prove um, that they had an Italian father. They did not have any document. They could not trace them. They had no information apart from the name. And this has gone on for years, for decades. Uh, but there are still so many uh, Eritreans of Italian descent who claim nationality, citizenship, and who claim this as a fundamental right. And, of course, I mean, there's difficulties on both sides. The dictatorship in Eritrea, which makes it difficult for people to, to leave or presumably to try to go to Italy and, and prove uh, their links. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the difficulty, the lack of documents are often um, to, to prove um, the birthright to at least uh, apply for Italian citizenship. Give us some examples. And, and what kind of numbers are we talking about? Um, let's say that during the 60 years of Italian colonization in the Horn of Africa, starting from Eritrea, then Somalia, then Libya, and then Ethiopia with Mussolini, uh, 60 years, um, a conservative estimate number is uh, 20,000 children, 20,000 mixed race children. Of these 20,000, a small minority. Um, could have uh, Italian citizenship was they were acknowledged by their fathers and could uh, could have Italian citizenship. So we're talking about five or six thousand people, which is not even the ten percent of that. Um, at the very moment, there are around 300, 400 families who claim for this right. But uh, even though they have been trying to claim to the Italian embassy for this right, and they cannot provide any document, and this is the hottest part. So in light of those complications, what is it that you're asking the Italian government to do? 
the Italian government and um, even the Italian parliament should try and facilitate access to the procedure of citizenship, even for the descendants of Italians who could not provide full documents. Because the story of Eritrea or of Ethiopia or of the former colonies is different from the other countries where Italians migrated, because those people could come to Italy, make research about their ancestors. From Eritrea is almost impossible. So they should find um, a better way, an easier way. It seems uh, darkly ironic that considering the debate right now about citizenship and, and the birthright uh, to it, that there's all these people that aren't even effectively allowed to prove uh, that they have uh, a birthright. How much awareness of this issue do you think there is in Italy? There is no awareness at all because there hasn't been any debate since the end of the war, since the end of colonialism and of fascism. There has been no debate about colonialism. Uh, only some, a very few academics uh, wrote and talked about co Italian colonialism, but not literature, not uh, cinema, not, not, not you know, mass culture, uh, and not even institutions, because the, the, the dark side of Italian colonialism was so embarrassing that the governments, all governments, tried to prevent any debate, any serious debate about that. Vittorio Longhi, Italian journalist of Eritrean origin and also author of the book The Color of My Name. Vittorio Longhi, thank you so much for explaining this story uh, to us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.